Okay, everybody. Settle down, settle down. I think we're going to. We'll be, we can continue talking after that, after this short presentation. So this is about React, uh, a new library from Facebook and Instagram. This is the about me slide, of course. Uh, I, th <laughs> I think it's funnier in, when you're not in LA because this is Madame Tussauds on uh, Highlands and Hollywood Boulevard, I think. <laughs> Many of you probably have the exact same picture. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> So uh, React um, open source library for building uh, web UIs. Um, and just to set the expectations, I haven't worked on this uh, library at all. So I just approached it as a developer who's curious and wanted to see what it's all about. So I have no contributions really. So you can, you're free to, to disagree with any of the ideas. I'm, I'm not going to get insulted. Uh, I think I just have one one typo in one of the examples. That's my contribution. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we'll talk about applications. I just wanted to make the distinction between uh, web pages and, and web applications. Uh, because traditionally you have the websites or you know, documents where maybe you have some JavaScript that does something small, maybe for validation and so on. But we are way past that. And today we're building web applications which means we have to mutate the UI a lot. Uh, maybe user does something, some new data comes from the server, maybe just the passage of time, so we have to uh, change the UIs of these, uh, of these applications. We build. And today we're stuck with the DOM. Um, I mean, uh, that's probably not what we ask for, but that's what we have now as a way to build applications. Uh, it's not the best tool. Uh, after all, it has document in the name. And we don't do documents anymore. Not that there's anything bad with documents, right? There's, there's uh, you know, blogs and interesting articles and so on. But uh, talking about web applications, we have to build them with the DOM. And we all have this love-hate relationship with the DOM. On one hand, it's familiar, seems to do the job, seems to be simple. Uh, you know, there's APIs, and you can get to anything you want, and you can change it. On the other hand, uh, it's a bit of a pain, right? Just setting the browser differences aside. Uh, it's just the API is kind of verbose. Um, get it and by the query selector all and all that stuff. Uh, it's also inherently slow because it's not JavaScript. It's, uh, it's something else, right? It's in the layout engine. Um, so you have to cross this bridge between DOM and, and JavaScript every time. Um, so performance troubles. And also, what about all these event handlers, right? Um, you, when you build a DOM, you want to, you know, the user to click or tap or do something, and you have to handle this stuff, and um, that's kind of interesting. So just remember the last time, I think anybody had to do this at some point. Have a bunch of data, and you have to create a table, right? And then you go, okay, let's create an element table, let's create a row, let's create, I mean, I've even omitted the T body, uh, but uh, we need a row, we need a, uh, Cell. Uh, let's see. Then, oh, hey, let's let's put some data in there. Append this. Append that. Create another element. Append. 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 And then, finally, you build a table, right? And uh, what about one of these things? Is a link now? Oh boy. So, okay, we we'll create an element. Hey, we set the attribute. We create a text node. Append. 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 And finally, you're done. And then data changes. Oh man. Now, what am I gonna do with this table? Do I keep reference to all those objects I've created? Probably not. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of uh, create elements there. Uh, do you traverse the nodes, uh, hunting for the stuff that changed so that you can update it? Uh, again, this is slow, looking for stuff all the time, and you have to write a lot of code just looking for things. Or well, the only sane solution is to just rebuild the whole thing. After all, you you build a don't thing once, and you can just put it in a function and then just call it with the new data. Uh, but that's also tend to be kind of expensive, rebuilding everything. Uh, plus, you might have some things like inputs uh, in there, and maybe the user has typed something, and you cannot just wipe out all the user input. They won't be happy. And you might have some event handlers in one of those, you know, table cells or links or buttons, whatever it is. So, I mean, you have to clear those out. So. Um, they don't just stick around and create memory leaks in some browsers. 
so that's what uh, React uh, comes with the idea of you know everything is just components, right? Uh, the most uh, overused uh, word in computer science, probably. Have components, and uh, components have some data, and that's all. So the component knows how to render itself, and it takes some data. And whenever the data changes, uh, from the developer's perspective, the uh, the the component is just re-rendered again. So you don't have to worry about this. So going back to the table example, then you have a component called table, and then it, it will have some roles and cells. And you as a, as a developer will say, okay, this is my data, and deal with it. And React will just build it. And then when the data changes, you don't have to say, okay, when exactly what changed in this DOM hierarchy and so on. You just say to React, here's my, the updated state of my data. You do your thing and just deal with it again. And how does exactly React deal with it? There's uh, two interesting concepts there. There's the virtual DOM and synthetic events. So the virtual DOM is um, React builds this, um, this DOM tree in uh, JavaScript land. So virtual DOM is probably too big of a word for what is essentially just a JavaScript object, right? So every node in there is uh, you know, just like represents a DOM node and has some properties, which are the the node attributes and so on. So just one object. And then it knows how to render this, this JavaScript object into the, the actual browser DOM. And then it, is, uh, it does this. So uh, whenever something changes in, in the data, in the virtual DOM, uh, React will take the state before and after, will compute a diff, and only update the stuff that it's changed. Uh, from developer perspective, it looks like everything is updated, um, but they're actually small, tiny, the most efficient and the smallest amount of updates that can be done. The other concept is about the events. Um, so React uses event delegation for everything. So although in your components, in the individual DOM nodes, you might say on click and so on, but all these are handled at the top of the, of the React application. And um, because they're synthetic events, they, um, um, they can be W3C compliant. Uh, they work across browser. So for example, you don't have to say, oh, is it the SRC element or is it the target and how do you get to the event element and so on. All that just works and bub bubbling, capturing works as it should be. And React has taken the liberty of do some minor fixes, like for example, on change which in regular browsers is uh, when you move away from the input field. But in React, is as soon as you type something, you, it fires this one change event. Some benefits of the virtual DOM is, um, like I said, it's all in, in JavaScript land. And that means it can also work on the server side. Um, it can also, if, if there's any, uh, any very complicated or slow operation. It can do them in a different thread in web workers. It's not doing it right now, but that's an option, right? Because everything is in JavaScript. Everything's nice and fast, and you don't worry about the browsers and the DOM. Some selling points I copied from the website. Um, declare <laughs> your components. Uh, you know, everything's very efficient. And obviously flexible, because it's uh, something new added to the Facebook code base, and it, it cannot just stop and rewrite everything, right? So it has to be done piece by piece. So it has to work with whatever uh, libraries and whatever legacy JavaScript exists there. Um, so from day one, it was designed to work with any other JavaScript that you might have. So let's take a look at a component. Uh, all right, so this is how you use a, a component, right? You have created your component called my widget, and then you say, uh, React render this this uh, render my component, pass it some attributes, properties, and so on, and uh, put it here. So that's pretty much the only time you have to worry about the DOM and just to say to React, this is your play area. So you know, do your thing over there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Um, so of course these components can contain other components. So let's say my widget has a, a head and a body, and in there you, you can also always use, um, what is it, 
you can always use uh, HTML. You know, there's wrappers for every uh, HTML element there uh, available from this React.dom. So you can use par you know div spans and all that stuff. Um, um, then you know pass pass any uh, which is like node attributes there. What? So there's this uh, this thing can get um, pretty complicated by right? making all those function calls right here. Uh, so there's something called JSX, um, which is Java, you know, XML inside of the JavaScript. So this is where everybody goes Ooh, XML. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can write your define your stuff instead of function calls in this XML format which many people find more uh, pleasant to write. And you can have designers write this sort of code that are not comfortable with JavaScript and function calls, but they know HTML, and this is very simple. It's very similar to HTML, um, only with, with your own custom stuff. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that uh, JSX is, uh, is a separate technology. It's not part of React. It's just something React uses if you can use with React if you want to, but you don't have to. And in fact, React doesn't use JSX at all because it's, it's a separate technology. Just making it uh, easier depending on people's tastes. So obviously this thing is not going to run in the browser, right? So you need some sort of transformation. So you have to transform JSX to regular JavaScript. So you can do that uh, at build time, all right? So you can have a um, a small script that runs in the background and as soon as you save it, it uh, transforms into JavaScript. Or you can do it on the fly in the browser. So the second option is not really, it's just for experimenting. Um, all right. Hello world. I'm just taking one, one example end to end. Right? You start with, with the basic HTML, include React, which by the way is uh, I think 18k gzipped minified. It's really tiny. Uh, and then you have your, your hello world script inside of the build directory. So you write, in, in my case, I write in SRC and transform everything into the build thing. Um, so in, in SRC, you write uh, JSX like this. And you can just say, okay, this is my uh, component. That's all it's going to do. And uh, then you have to tra transform this into JavaScript. And so there's a, a NPM module uh, called React Tools. And it's a bunch of command line tools. And you just say, it comes with this utility JSX. So you just run it and it compiles and transforms everything in from the SRC and writes into the build directory. Or you can run this uh, continuously, which is uh, what you do during development. Right? So it has this watch or, or you can just, you know, just run it all the time. Whenever you save something, it's compiled. So you wrote the SRC thing like this with with the JSX XML, and then it, as soon as you save and you have that watch process, uh, it writes this thing. So the transform matches line by line. So if, if there's a, if there's an error, then you, it's on the same line, so that you can go back to the source and then find uh, what it's doing. And it's a very very simple transform. It's nothing complicated just taking that XML and transforming into JavaScript function calls. Very lightweight. So just for experimentation, you can always do this thing on the fly. Uh, not recommended, but just for, for trying out. In addition to React, then you, you include this JSX transformer. Um, and then, then load your scripts with some invalid uh, type so that they don't run but they're still loaded by the, uh, and the transformer, whatever it finds here, it transforms into regular JavaScript. Yeah, uh, I said all these things. Very simple, keeps line numbers, it also allows JavaScript, so you can write JavaScript inside, so you don't need a separate templating language or anything, you just uh, write your uh, little bits of you know, conditions or loops uh, inside of the, uh, in the JSX. I'll see an example. So, and of course, I had to build this slideshow with with React, right? Not probably the best use case, but still. So this is a slide, right? And um, I have a slide component, 
and then you can say okay I have also a list component and it has these items so it's, you open those curly braces and in there you just write uh, any own JavaScript you can you want um, yeah, because the slideshow is not very dynamic or reactive interface, so um, I said, okay, what about you? if it's some sort of slideshow builder, right? So this is a, one example uh, of slide component and then some list, and whenever I tap, it's you know, just adding stuff to the list. Uh, and if I hit enter, it kind of commits it, and then you... Yeah. Excellent CSS skills here. All right, uh, so um, just wanted to show you how this thing is done. So when you, when you create a, a React component, uh, you give it a name, obviously, and then you call this create class, which I wish was called create component, but it's slightly confusing, but I think there's some heated debate on renaming this. And the only thing that you need to implement, so you create, create a component and pass it a JavaScript object, right? The only required thing is a render function. So this render function knows how to display your component. So in this case, I'll just return a div, uh, and, um, and my slide can have properties. So these properties are available by using these props. Uh, and you can see here, here, right? My slide component has a title property, and I access it by saying props title. And then you, you access all the, in this case, I say, okay, whatever it is in the slide, I don't care. Any children of this thing will be uh, displayed in there. And that's all, I have a component now. And it, it was stateless, right? There's no state, there's, you know, just showing one title property and displaying any, any sort of children you might have. Well, the list is uh, stateful, right? Because you can edit and add new, new items to the list and so on. Uh, so when you have a stateful, something that changes state and re-renders, then you have to implement a function called get, get initial state. In my case, it just returns the properties that were set here. If we go back, right, so this is the list, and it has an items property. Right, so this is the initial state of my component. Um, so when when I render it, I, I want to, to put a, a little form, uh, and this is where you can, as you can see, you can write JavaScript in inside of this thing that looks like a template. Right? You open those brackets and then do any any JavaScript. In this case, it's a it's a simple uh, you know array map, and it, it displays list items, and in the end, it puts a dis additional list item, which is the, the the input box where you type. And when it changes, you handle change, and when you submit, you handle submit. So although you put all these things inside of these components here, uh, all those event handlers are moved to at the top of the of the React tree, uh, and will be handled there. So there's no, it's all event delegation. All right. So the event handlers, they're essentially the same, uh, just when you submit, I kind of commit this thing to the list. Um, so if, it, if it's a preview, I'll just say, okay, in my items, the, the last one gets the value that the user has typed, right? So you get the event object here. So like I said, you don't have to look for it and you don't have to say, okay, is it SRC element, is it a target, whatever it is. So it just works. Uh, and there's al always uh, those escape, uh, routes in React, if you really, really, for some reason, want to get to the actual event, it's, it's available, it's e underscore, I think, uh, I don't know, native event, something like this. So it's there. Um, but uh, yeah, so just update the last item in, in my state, in my list of items, and at the end you say set state. So every time you set state, the render function of this component is called again. Uh, it constructs a new virtual DOM. It, it compares the, the initial state, the previous state with the new state, computes any differences, and decides what's the minimum amount of, of DOM updates I can do to make this as efficient as possible. So again, with the handle submit, you just say, okay, this is not a preview. So when it's not a preview, I add a new item to the list. 
and as you can see again you can have uh, uh, get DOM no you get to the to the actual browser DOM no if you want to and there's always APIs for that most of the time you don't have to so inheritance of course I want to reuse some of my components uh, so there's no inheritance you know, in in the meaning of class inheritance, but uh, you can compose mm, components from other components. So that's the recommended way. You know, just create tiny little components that are very specific with one specific goal, and then you mix and match them in any way you like. And there is also the idea of mixing. So let me just show you an example. So the composition is right. You have uh, you have one component, and inside of it, you know, just put any other components you want. Uh, the mixing is you can have. Um, uh, another JavaScript object with, with some reusable stuff. And then when you de define your component, when you create your component, then there's this mixing property where you can see, okay, these are the stuff that I want to mix in into my component, if you want to. All right. Yeah, so for, uh, playing with, uh, with JSX, right, because it's, and it's like HTML, but it's still something new. So I wanted to build a little thing that uh, will just show me how JSX uh, transforms into JavaScript. Um, what is it? All right, so I built this thing, of course, in React, uh, uh, where you, you write just some JavaScript on one side and see how it compiles to, I mean, you write JSX, see how it compiles to, to JavaScript, just as a, as a learning tool or debugging. A few examples, right? So um, that's kind of nice. It's also built in React, so you can see it immediately tells me if, if I have some some error or something. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, something like that. Um, and to build this kind of reactive thing that you know you type something and something changes there, or or causes errors stuff like this. And that was actually pretty simple to do. Uh, let's see what happened there. Yeah, that's the transformer example. Again, because there's a state, uh, I hope you can see anything, right? So the state of my component is I have input code, I have result, and I have error, maybe, sometimes. Uh, so my transform function is trying to do the transform, and if there's an error, it sets the state with, an, uh, with the error message. If there's no error, it just sets the state with the result and empty error message. And anytime you set the state, the render function is called, and it rebuilds this thing. So that's simple. And because it's a, J it's a React component, and because my slideshow is also a React component, so I could use here the same thing and you know, style it however I want, right? Right, then just play around with this transformer. All right. So some people don't like the, the fact that you're building all the JavaScript, uh, all the UI in JavaScript, because that's what you do in React, right? You define all the UI in JavaScript. Like, so what about my you know separation of concerns? What about you know oh you're mixing my content with my behavior? In this case again we're talking about applications, um, and um, you know not about mostly content with with a little bit of JavaScript, but this is all kind of uh, a runtime. So the, the the good thing about it is that there's no more hunting for DOM nodes. Uh, because if you look at, uh, at most uh, web applications out there, you see that it's insane amount of time is spent just finding stuff. You know, you, you end up in a function and say, oh, query selector row or get a learn by ID and uh, just finding stuff that you want to modify. And then you go, you know, create element, append child, and all that stuff. So all this is gone because the React knows, knows your, what, what you want to do. And all you have to do is just change the state, change the data. Uh, right, so um, well, something else I wanted to mention, yeah, because it's it's all built in, in JavaScript land, so then what about uh, performance, right? So what happens when 
you load a page and there's actually nothing. It's just a blank page because the JavaScript hasn't arrived. That's not really nice. Really. Um, and so there's, uh, if you go to GitHub, uh, let's see, Facebook, And so I was uh, kind of surprised when I went for the first time. Oh, I don't have connection. I was surprised how many open source projects there are from Facebook that nobody knows about. Uh, but if you search there, uh, you find um, something called React Page, uh, which is um, a node thing where you can, if you have Node.js on, on the back end, because everything is in, in JavaScript land, right? Or the virtual DOM uh, and all that stuff. So you can build the first view on the server side with the, um, you know, using the exact same code and send the first, uh, uh, the, the first view generated on the server. And whenever JavaScript arrives, it will handle all the events and all that stuff. Uh, let's see, React, yeah, there's this thing called React page. So, uh, it's relatively recent library, but people are kind of into that, contributing, you know, other stuff. Rails, Python. I think these are just mostly wrappers for for JSX transforms. If you, if for some reason you cannot use Node.js or npm um, to build this thing. Um, so what I'm playing around, let's see here. Uh, is render the first side, the first view on the server side with PHP, because uh, you know for some reason some people may not be able to use Node.js or they have a large code base with PHP and say, okay, I have all my data access, all my database, web services, all that stuff. I know how to get the data in Java in PHP. So um, luckily there's this um, V8 extension for. Uh, for PHP, so which is the Google's V8 engine, uh, and you can in set up PHP and install this extension, and from there you can just say, okay, I want, uh, you know, I want to get my React library, and uh, you know, I get, I want to get my um, my custom components and so on, setting up some array of stuff. You know, this is all the data that I want to render, and then you just say, you can do this thing called instead of rendering on the page, you can render it to a string, right? You pass all the data, and that's all you do, and then you just echo this stuff, and you print it. And there you have it, you can use PHP on the server side, and let's see what is the second thing. All right, you fetch the data, you do this thing, uh, render the whole page. Oh, is, yeah, so the other thing was how to once you have rendered this on the server side, how to to kick in the same thing with JavaScript, but yeah, you can read this thing and figure it out. Yes? Can you make the font bigger? Like, can you make the font? Oh, the font. Uh, Sorry. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, my web my blog is called phpied.com, so you can uh, you can you know just look at this stuff. And something that I tried just uh, yesterday, the day before, um, just an example of what, what you can do with um, with React. Uh, I saw that Steve Souders, this is a performance meetup, everybody knows Steve Souders, so he has uh, this uh, active table bookmark plan because sometimes you see data on pages and then you want to um, just play around with that data. So. Uh, I wanted to do the same thing with React in, or better and see how hard would that be. So the, the idea is, all right, you go to some page that has uh, an HTML table, right? But you know, what do we do with this thing, right? I can probably, you know, just command, select, and copy to Excel and so on, but uh, not much. So the, the the bookmarklet kicks in and creates a, a new button here that takes that uh, the, the HTML data and renders it with React, and then you can you know just sort stuff. Uh, right, you can sort ascending, descending, whatever. Uh, you can you know, double click to edit some stuff. 
kind of thing you can search if you want, right? So just a just little utility, which I think maybe should be part of the browsers. I don't know. Then you can download this thing as, as a, a CSV or JSON, and that kind of thing. After you have filtered and, and done all this stuff. So um, to play around with this table, how was this done in React? Um, and it was surprisingly easy. Uh, I had before that somewhere, where is that? Um, a post, because I, I showed you how, what a pain it is to create a table in HTML, right? and how much easier it is to create it in, in React. I'm just, I have to create a class. Uh, all right, my table has some state, if it's going to change the state, which is the data, you know, passed to that, um, to my component, right, when I'm going to use it. So this is how I'm going to use my, my table component, you say, okay, this is where you're going to render it, and this is the component I want, and this is the data, I'll have a bunch of data. Uh, and the render function, this is uh, all you have to do. Uh, you say, okay, render a table, do a little loop here uh, through all the data rows and another loop through all the, uh, for all the cells, or a little bit friendlier in, in JSX. All right. All right, table body, one loop here uh, with a function, you know, just a remap that returns table row and another function in there that returns table cells, and that's all. So whenever you change the data, uh, it just renders. Uh, so the thing that I wanted to show you is how from this simple table, you end up with this more complicated, um, let's see. Uh, make the font bigger. Right. So in this case, the, t uh, the table is, you know, pretty much, you know, table. There's a head with all the headers. I look through the headers. There's a, there's a body. Uh, when I double click anywhere, I, I can edit the content and then a loop for all the rows. And if my state turns out to be editable, then I can edit that cell. Um, so that's the, the render function. And everything else is just uh, playing with an array. So everything, all the sorting, ascending, descending, uh, you know, just saving the data that you enter and so on. And just, you know, you just get the state, do something with the state. In this case, I play with the data, set the new state and you're done, that's all. Uh, if you want to make it editable, again, just flip one flag here in the, in the state and you're done. Uh, the export function, just going through an array on the search, right? The same thing. Uh, yeah, you get the uh, you get what, what you're searching for, right? The needle in the haystack, and then you just go through a filter from you know array filter, find the stuff. Uh, you know the sorting, the same thing. You know, it's just a little bit complicated. It should be, but it's trying to sort the random data found on the web, right? and um, yep. That's all we took to create that, that little bookmarklet thing that lets you just play around with uh, with any HTML table. So sorry, I I have to check it again because I know I just worked on it last night and I, I still kind of like it. <laughs> So it's kind of inspired by uh, by Safari, right? In Safari, you have the reader where where it presents another view of the same page, but more readable. So the same thing, just overlay on top of the page and just play play with this this really simple, you know, uh, play with this with this table as if it's yours, right? And then just okay, download this thing as a, as a JSON or whatever it is. And uh, slideshow. Yep, I think that was all that I wanted to say. Uh, it's an open source project. Go to GitHub. There's, a, or if you go to Facebook, uh, let's see, uh, Facebook 
dot github io slash react right. uh, it has documentations in it, it can tell you how to get started but you already know that uh, and there's some documentations the api the api is you know very simple top level api i don't know five methods components for all the components set properties set state really really simple and like i said it's really tiny uh, there's also um, probably on the home page there's an irc channel uh, you know just examples blog and that's kind of what standard thing which you expect from an open source project so i encourage you to give it a chance and thank you very much for your attention I hope I can answer any questions. Like I said, I didn't work on this thing. I just played around with it. But if you have any anything you want to ask, yes, please. Uh, AngularJS comes to mind. Uh, it's similar to. Do you have any experience? You can say what's different. Uh, unfortunately, no. I, I cannot tell Angular from um, from uh, what is it? Angular from Angular from uh, no. No, not Angular. 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 Yes. I know. Yeah. There are literally both positive and both cause people comparing this and that. I think from what I've seen, it is easier to start uh, in Angular. I'm really confusing it with Angular. <laughs> but I think they introduce a lot of uh, terminology, a lot of new concepts, and so on. I think there was somebody from, um, um, from Khan Academy who was looking into different libraries uh, how to build some complicated uh, math uh, editor or something like this. So we had, uh, I think, on core an answer explaining the reasoning that, you know, just it looks simple and it seems to the work. And, um, yeah, just, uh, which reminds me of, uh, because we're, you know, this is what performance, you know, uh, you can look up, there's one example of somebody who did, uh, um, what was it, uh, uh, a shooter game, uh, in Java. Somebody rewrote it in JavaScript, so some, some other guy just rewrote the UI part in, in React. I forgot <coughs> one of those things. Yes, please. I'm um, curious if it can build a virtual DOM from an existing HTML page. So you come to the page, you want it to have content for SEO purposes, but then you want to have it be an app on top of that content. Yes, uh, that's exactly what I did with an HTML table. Uh, because you know it's, it's an existing page, right? Uh, so I just go to any random page and I take the content from there. So yeah, and this was actually the, the unpleasant part, <laughs> just working with with whatever it is on the page. Let's see, uh, where was that? Ah, completely different. So the bookmarklet stuff is the, the thing that reads the HTML, right? So in this case, I'm trying, where is it? Writing an iframe so that I don't get any, you know, just insane stuff. But yeah, populate, I think. This was where you find, all, find a table, and, uh, and then you just loop over a table and find, find, you know, headers, find body, and so on. And then at the end, you end up with headers and data, and you pass those to your React table component and say, okay, this is the existing stuff, work with it. Oh, so you, you have to parse the HTML yourself? In this case, yes, because I don't, I, I want this thing to run on any, any old page. But uh, like I said, there's the React page. You, you can use Node.js on the back end and, and then use, uh, just handle the updates, you know, the, the second views after the first one uh, on the client. Or you can use, you know, if, you, if your backend is PHP, you can use V8. Uh, again, build the first view from React, but running on the server side. Yes, please. In terms of writing unit tests, how testable is the React component? I think it still works in that yeah. I don't know, I haven't written unit tests. Does it use Ajax in the background, or do you have to 
inside of the component, you have to, in the, in the initialize function, you have to set up some, some, some kind of way in order to do that communication yourself. Uh, you have to take a look at how it's done on, in the React page on, in Node.js, I haven't. But for me, in the, in the PHP side, uh, I just rendered the with data that I have to be on the server, send the HTML to the table, and then duplicate it in data and give it to initialize uh, React on the client side. And it sees the same data and it renders it, but it sees all the nothing changed, so I don't have to do anything. But in my case, it's, it's duplicate. Uh, but yeah. then I don't think there's any, you know, you have to see how my in line, but I, I'm not aware of anything that API can say, okay, this is outdated in this HTML and use it in the React on the server. There would need to be some kind of a component to build in order to do a diff and then only push the, the differences, right, the deltas up to the server in that case. Then. Okay. <laughs> then the difference between the virtual DOM and the real DOM is actually faster than just wiping out the real DOM? Like, does it depend on the characteristics of the data you're explaining? Uh, you, no, you, you're not computing the difference between. So, the first time you render it, right, you keep it. So then you compute the difference between the two JavaScript objects. You don't compute the difference between whatever is on the DOM because you don't want to touch the DOM at all unless you have to. Is that a question? And then also, is there any support for throttling updates? Like I see that you set state lots of times. Like, if you do that more than you need to in a certain turn of the line? Yes, there is, there is some, some throttling built into it. Yeah, so you have it. Yeah, the whole idea is to prevent the layout flash, right? So you don't have to do a bunch of layouts, uh, you know, or asking for, you know, offset heights and whatnot, and keep updating the DOM. So, uh, you know, one part of the application updates it here, somebody else, you know, I get the major suppress this one. In, in React, like usually all the updates happen in the same in the one request animation frame. Yes, does it does it um, support some sort of data binding? Uh, say you want to create like I think you call it a JSX, like a template, and perhaps the person building the template is just more of a web designer, doesn't have code that well. Uh, can it support like some data binding, like the way Backbone does? Well. Yeah, your model is just a JavaScript object, right? Um, that, that, that's all. I mean, there's, of course, the, the data binding with, with whatever data you have and in your render function. Uh, and yeah, this designer, designers indeed, uh, at least in Facebook, are comfortable with just editing the, the JSX without, you know, there's, it's not completely separated. At least there's some well, JavaScript people that are fine with just editing the JSX. So. But uh, in terms of model, it's, you know, the model is just a uh, JavaScript object of data. So there's, you know, it's not like in backbone, you have to say, define a model and so on. Can you just, uh, and I think the, uh, because the Instagram site was built with React and it was the first non-Facebook. I mean, I think when Instagram joined Facebook, they didn't have website for it. Uh, so now they do have profiles and so on. So they wanted to use backbone, uh, and they said, okay, because React is just the UI, I'll use uh, you know, the routing from backbone and the models from backbone. And uh, then they realized, you know, gradually they didn't need those models. So now it's just all React, JavaScript objects, and backbone for routing the URLs. something other than the DOM to render your data to eventually? I mean, you bagged on the DOM a little bit at the beginning, right? It's probably the slowest way to continually re-render it. Maybe Canvas or something like that. Let's see what the next logical step. I'm not aware, but uh, you can join the the fun in the end. Yeah, I see it. You guys can see if somebody's working on it, but okay. eventually, this DOM thing has to go away. You mentioned that the DOM nodes are expensive because they're in the layout engine. Is that true for detached DOM nodes? How different is the virtual DOM stuff? It's just a simpler version of it? Mm -hmm. Well, the, yeah, the virtual DOM is, is just a JavaScript object. That's all there is. Yeah. So, yeah, we obviously you, you can do better with, with um, uh, operations for taking in a document fragment and doing all that stuff. 
But uh, you have to know what you're doing, right? And um, it's quite clear you have to really think about stuff. In this case, all you have to think about is my data, the state of my data, and that's all. But then you write different ways to minimize the, the, the slowness of the down. This requires skill. Do you have a way to reverse it, to have JavaScript fall into it? Go the other way instead of instead of uh, generating JavaScript. Uh, well, now from from JavaScript to generate the JSX stuff or uh, no? You, you use React to create JavaScript. Right? So can you create? Can you a DOM? Can you reverse that from from a DOM tree to create? I'm not sure. If you have JavaScript. The React code. JMX code. So from a full JavaScript code, and you reverse engineer it back into JS uh, code. It's a JSX item. Uh, okay. So there's no engineering tool for that. I don't think there's any real kind of use case for that. Yeah. Well, the use would be you, you generated it. You know how to tune something over here and you pull it back in so you can then proceed. I think the Genesis is easy enough to write, but you could just have some. It's open source, accepts contributions. <laughs> Alright, thanks, John. Ah, okay. Something more general about Facebook and their open source code and uh, how the contribution exceptions work or how they push out the code directly to the public. Uh, well, I cannot really say I'm not directly involved, but um, from what I've seen in the past, it's, it's, you know, you create something nice and you want to share it and you put it on GitHub and it just stays there and <laughs> nobody's really doing anything. But uh, I know lately that's, that's uh, been changing and React is a, is a good example of a uh, you know, properly managed open source project. Um, You can look at the Brigitte Hub and see how often things are updated, but I think it's very I think. What they currently use? Facebook currently uses React or it's... Uses it for some parts, you know, because it's a big application, you know, it can you know, take a while to rewrite the whole thing. But, uh, for example, the comments and likes underneath every post, right, this thing is in React because you know, you're typing something, you're in the UI, somebody else replies, and it comes from the from a teacher request, you know, a very dynamic thing. Uh, the whole Instagram, um, they type ahead, they think in the, uh, in the search box at the top, that, that kind of stuff is also so. And yeah, I think there's a whole uh, ad uh, management tool that is completely within the React. Uh, with developers not usually go to those places. <laughs> It's kind of making its way through the, through the whole site. Sorry, one more question. Sure. Last one, I promise. Um, can you make, do like animations? Could you use like jQuery with React? Um, or do something similar to what jQuery does to animate? Uh, yeah, so uh, you can use anything. You can have access to the original design. You have access to the download nodes if you need to. So you can put in anything you want. Um, and the transition parts was, uh, and you also have callbacks for every time uh, the component, there's those, uh, you know, uh, callbacks you can see, uh, events like component did mount, mount, component will mount, will unmount, and that kind of stuff. So you can hook up different things. So for this slide show, I did, uh, for this slide show, I did um, sign up for the event that, well, you know, component did mount, and I changed the class name to do the transition. Uh, but this was in version 0 0.4. Now there's a couple of days ago, there's 0 0.5 version in which you can have, uh, especially if uh, uh, any method for transitions, you can create a group of components and you can have a transition, especially um, for the purpose of transition. But for any general purpose animation you want, you just get access to the, the actual download and the whatever. 
do they have any janky stuff that you have to do to uh, make humidification work? Or because I know in Angular there are like some weird stuff you have to do. For humidification? Yeah, for humidification. Otherwise, they will like mess up or something. No, uh, I think the, uh, well, uh, I think the React library itself compiles with with Google Clojure compiler and the most aggressive. Okay, um, so JSX and other stuff. Alright, thanks very much for the questions and um, I'll be with you.